With thousands of players on NFL rosters, there's bound to be a few bad apples. But when you think of those guys, you think the likes of Aaron Hernandez, Ray Rice, and Ray Carruth, not NFL Hall of Famers and TV analysts. But today, I want to bring you the story of how one of the NFL's greatest players and biggest TV personalities tried to murder a man. The Dallas Cowboys had been the most dominant team of the 90s, winning three Super Bowls. But they were beginning to fade away. With the aging of Troy Aikman, Emmitt Smith, Michael Irvin, and Larry Allen, they hadn't been able to dominate opponents like they used to. But even as their physical abilities began to fade, something else had it. Their egos. The Cowboys thought very highly of themselves, and the team embodied this egotistical mindset. But one player embodied these traits better than no other. Michael Irvin, the playmaker. Irvin was the 15th of 17 children. Yes, you heard that right. He had 16 siblings. He was raised in the ghetto of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and attended St. Thomas Aquinas High School. A football factory that's produced talents such as James White, Joey Boza, and Geno Atkins. After a successful football career there, he would go on to attend the University of Miami. While at Miami, Irvin would set school records for receptions and receiving yards. Play under his future head coach Jimmy Johnson and win a national championship. This led to him being drafted 11th overall in 1988 by the Cowboys. Irvin would go on to help the Cowboys win three Super Bowls and was one of the most dominant receivers of the 90s. But he wasn't the prototypical receiver. At 6'2 and 217 pounds, he wasn't a speed guy and had to rely on his huge frame and aggressive mentality to go get the ball, which he did quite successfully, earning him the nickname the Playmaker. But on July 29, 1998, that aggressive mentality and huge ego almost ended his career. It was just another day at the Dallas Cowboys training camp in Midwestern State University, and players were waiting in line to get their hair cut from a Dallas barber named Vinny. After Vinny had finished up cutting cornerback Charlie Williams' hair, Everett MacGyver hopped in the chair ready for his cut. MacGyver, a 6'5", 325-pound lineman from North Carolina, had bounced around the league for a few years as a journeyman, and was on his fourth team. He'd been in the league since 1993. But then, Michael Irvin walked in and cut the entire line and went right up to MacGyver in the barber's chair, yelling, seniority, and punk, get the F out of my chair. Irvin would then tell the barber Vinny to get this mother effer out of the chair. MacGyver, who'd been in the league for five years at that point, felt as though he should no longer have to tolerate this hazel. And with fellow lineman Eric Williams telling him, you're no effing rookie and he can't tell you what to do. Everett then shoved Irvin back. The two began to fight and Leon led. Yes, that Leon led, tried to get in the middle and break things up. Suddenly in the chaos, MacGyver punched Irvin right in the mouth. Bad move. Irvin's aggressiveness and ego completely boiled over at this point, as he grabbed a pair of Vinny scissors and he stabbed MacGyver in the neck, just above his collarbone. He stabbed him with so much force that he just missed the carotid artery, which would have killed MacGyver. Blood immediately began to shoot all over the room and Everett was screaming as the Cowboys medical staff rushed in, putting Everett into an ambulance and rushing him to the ER, where he would receive 18 stitches but would survive. Former Cowboys cornerback Kevin Smith would go on to describe the event as crazy, couldn't believe what he was seeing, and saying Everett had done nothing wrong. Now this attempted murder charge on its own would be bad enough, but at the time Irvin was already on probation for a cocaine bust and it was looking as though he could be facing quite a lot of jail time. But now comes the part where the story becomes even crazier. Jerry Jones, the Cowboys owner, didn't want one of the greatest players in his franchise history to do some serious jail time, and he knew he had to act quick. Realizing he had to stop this before MacGyver could press charges, he organized Irvin to pay MacGyver over six figures to shut up and not press charges. And it looked as though the entire incident had been swept under the rug, until the Dallas Morning News found out about it. Once the papers found out and began to ask questions, Coach Chan Gailey and Jerry Jones called the incident horseplay and said they would handle it in-house. Yes, they actually said that. And Michael Irvin would go on to tell reporters to let it go while MacGyver refused to comment. After the incident, MacGyver would go on to heal in time for the season. And he played on and off with the Cowboys for the next two years, and after a short stint with the Falcons in 2000, he retired. In 2010, Deadspin named him the 68th worst NFL player of all time. It was almost impossible to find any information on him after his NFL career concluded, 
except for one photo of him at a Cowboys game. Irvin, on the other hand, would go on to play until 1999 when a spinal cord injury against the Eagles would force him to retire. But while Everett faded into obscurity once his career ended, Michael has become even more of a celebrity. He would go on to act in two Adam Sandler films, The Longest Yard and Jack and Jill, become an analyst for the NFL Network, compete in Dancing with the Stars, host the TV show Fourth and Long, and get inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame. Before finding out about the story, I love Michael Irvin, and I still think he's an incredible player, and maybe he's changed, but that's unlikely due to him completely glossing over the incident while discussing bullying back in 2013. And without Jerry Jones' influence and Michael's deep pockets, he would most likely be known as the former great convicted of attempted murder, and not be the outgoing comical analyst we all know him as today.